Yes, but first up, he went viral as the undecided voter in the red sweater who questioned both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton at the presidential debate last year. Please welcome Ken Bone is back with us. Ken, great to meet you. Great to meet you wore the sweater. Thank you. I could not wear it. I know, no. I, I requested you. That, that is your symbol. And I know you, I, I've read your tweets this week. I know you wonder why you're here. Uh, yeah, for sure. I've wondered why this whole thing happened. Well, you became sort of emblematic as the independent voter. You were at that, that famous debate, and it was all independents who hadn't made up their mind. And to me, you're a gettable voter. I'll be honest with you. I, I have a, a, a dog in this fight. I want to convince you that okay. you should have voted for Hillary instead of Godzilla. <laughs> well, I didn't, I'll tell you that much. I didn't vote for Godzilla. I didn't vote for Jill oh. Stein either. Not, not Godzilla and not Jill Stein. But well, I'm are not you saying gonna, Are you going to reveal who you did vote for? No, I'm waiting for my book deal to come through. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? No, oh. not at all. I, pr I promised before the election that I wouldn't say who I voted for, because like it or not, we're obsessed with celebrities in this country, and even like an F-list celebrity like me, people put stock in my opinion. <laughs> And it's not fair to the democratic process if I tell them what to believe. Now, like, you're, uh, you're an informer. That is your job to inform people, educate them, entertain them. I'm a random dude that works at the power plant. People don't need to be informed by me. Who did you vote for? <laughs> that was a wonderful speech, Ken, but who did you vote? I'm not leaving. I'm not going to leave here at the... You're not getting out of California, my friend. It's only an hour show, Bill. Uh, really? Okay, but you, you, you didn't vote for Trump. So you voted, you, must, you didn't vote for Jill Stein. You didn't vote for uh, fucking Aleppo dude, did you? I voted for either Johnson or Clinton or Trump. You know, one of the big three. Well, the big two and then the one. Okay, all right. Well, you keep your secrets, Ken. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to have you here because you are what I call a gettable voter. You're, you're not totally in the Trump camp at all. I think there are things that you don't like about him at all. And yet it, it puzzles me that, that you were still undecided that late and you still don't want to tell us who you wanted to vote for. And you're the person we need to get. And when I say me, we, I mean the Democrats, the liberals, if we want to turn this country around because I think it's on a very, very bad path. What path do you think the country's on under Trump? Well, one of the weird things about being undecided is they ask you, like, who are you going to vote for? And that's the last human being I've ever told who I was going to vote for, was this person doing the survey to determine if I could be at the debate. And they said, how likely are you to change your mind? And I said, I don't know, you know, like two. Probably not going to change my mind, but I want to keep an open mind. They said, well, in this super polarizing election, a two out of ten likelihood of changing your mind is still undecided. So there was nobody on that stage that was above a four. But I wouldn't be like two in a million <laughs> if I it can, was Donald Trump. I can totally understand that. But uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to wait and make up my mind, you know, make my final decision, is in Canada you have an 80-day election campaign and they complain right. that it's too long. Right. Ours started on November 10th and it's already going again. And people are like, who are you going to vote for in 2020? I don't want to feed that fire because that turns our political process into TMZ. It creates people like me and it creates nothing but sound bites and sniping back and forth, and it doesn't help solve the issues. All right, Ken, but we... <laughs> <laughs> but we paid for your effort out here. You're going to answer my questions. <laughs> <laughs> I've been exposed enough to politics to know how to not answer Okay, questions. so just tell me this. What, what is it about Hillary? Because Hillary Clinton's book is coming out this week, and she, she made a statement this week which uh, sounded a lot like something I've said about her in the past, which is... Future historians, I feel, will be very puzzled at why people hated her as much as they did. I could see not liking her terribly much because she's not a great politician. But, but uh, I mean, I've said it before. If you, if you really hate Hillary Clinton, you were molested by a real estate lady. <laughs> I, I... I just don't get it. She's a bland centrist. This is not Che Guevara in a pantsuit. What... What about her irked you so much that you were willing to just be independent until the last minute? Well, I never really hated Hillary. Like, I was, you know, I'm willing to wait until the investigations come out on any charges against anybody because we're supposed to have this presumption of innocence, especially if you, you know, look like you're part of the right demographic in this country. Uh, hmm? So, uh, you know... What does that mean? 
Uh, you have a presumption of innocence if you're uh, white people, basically, according oh. to our justice system. Oh. Uh, it's supposed to be for everybody, and we're working on it. Uh, but I, I try to give that benefit of the doubt to everyone. And we have trouble extending that to uh, polarizing figures like politicians. And even someone who has moderate or centrist uh, opinions uh, relative to the Democratic Party, like Hillary Clinton, is going to be a polarizing figure, and people just want to want to jump on her, like, uh, and Donald Trump was the master of getting people to look at her instead of look at him. Did that work on you? Uh, I try to dig a little deeper, you know. Uh, I don't believe anything that I hear the first time. So did you think the emails were very important? Uh, it was never really a big issue to me. I was willing to let the, let the investigation play out. Okay, well, it did. James Comey got up there and he said, we looked at it, he scolded her a little bit, and he said no prosecutor would bring charges. Um, and then 10 days before the election, he brought it up again. Yeah, I thought that was a really weird move, especially since it looked for all the world like she was going to win at that point. And like, right. what are you doing? Why are you bringing this up if you don't have anything? And then it turned out he didn't have anything. So I still don't see the sense in it. Well, what about, okay, so what about Russia? I, I, I saw this, uh, uh, we were off last week, and there was a big story about a focus group that somebody did. And they had voters, even the ones who voted for Trump, very disillusioned with him. And then the guy said, uh, what about Russia? And you can say about Russia, you think it's something big, you don't think it's something big, or you can say, I don't know. And every one of the Trump people said, I don't know. Because when you watch Fox News, you don't know. Yeah, that's... They just don't report it. Where do you get your news? I try to dig as far as I can on everything. I'll, I'll get the sound bites from Fox News, and then I'll think, okay, what's wrong with this particular one? And that puts you on the track that what are we ignoring? And then you can watch your MSNBCs and kind of get, you know, you have your Trump, or you have your Fox News way over on the right, and then you have your center, and then you have your, your left-wing news. You know, they're not quite as far tilted. But they give you leads, things that are, what are we trying to ignore on both sides? So and do you, you think go, there is something to the Russia story? Oh, absolutely. Foreign governments have been messing with each other's political processes since we invented governments. And by sniping back and forth across the aisle on this, we're putting tools in their tool belt. If we think that... Russia wasn't trying to influence the election, we're crazy. And if we think they're not going to come back and try to do it again, we're even crazier. So, so, <laughs> so what about Donald Trump, who uh, has admitted to Lester Holt that he fired James Comey because Comey was looking into this, and he doesn't believe it's a real story, but he's been caught lying about it time and time and time again. I mean, every week we see stuff more that shows that, yes, they were colluding with Russia. They were colluding with a foreign adversary to influence the election because it helped them. Isn't that a deal breaker? I mean, well, at this point, we have the president that we have. You know, you can't go back and make Hillary Clinton the president. And I'm willing to let the investigation play out, but you also have to keep your eyes open because foreign governments are going to try to get in, and they're going to try to influence every election. Like, if they could come in and pick the dog catcher in my hometown in Belleville, they will. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are your... What, when you look back, like, on President Obama, even President Bush, do you, do you, are you nostalgic for a time when you maybe weren't so nervous every day? Oh, I liked President Obama very much. Oh, you uh, did? Uh, I voted for Obama once, one of the two times. Uh, so I don't have any problem telling all you folks who I voted for in past elections, if you want to come ask me after the show. So you voted for Mitt Romney or you voted for McCain? I voted for McCain. I wasn't oh. really a big uh, Sarah Palin person, but in the scheme of things, it only matters if John McCain was, you know, ill at the time, and he wasn't. Uh, so I was willing to overlook what I thought was not the greatest choice for vice president. And uh, I like John McCain. You know, he's a, a more moderate-leaning Republican. And what about, like, like this week, I, I saw this quote from Donald Trump. He was talking about his new tax plan, you know, and he said, it will be the greatest tax reduction in the history of our country. Everything is always in the history. Have you noticed that? Greater than ever before. You'll see a rocket ship. You will see something happen like you've never seen before. Uh, and what then... would be greater than ever before for me is if, like, if the government wants to come and take my money, they're going to. But if, like, if I had to label myself, I'd be a libertarian. Uh, but I don't care about if everybody smokes weed or not, so I don't register with the party. But if you want to uh, live, the way, you live your life the way you want to live it, go ahead. If you want the government to stay out of your life, that's great. But when the government comes and takes our money, and they're going to, 
let's spend it a little more responsibly. Let's not worry about giving tax breaks to the very richest people who aren't missing that money in the first place because we've proven that that money doesn't trickle down to me in the upper middle class. It doesn't trickle down to my mom who's unemployed. So maybe we keep their money and we use it for something good. You're, you're a confusing man, Ken. <laughs> because... <laughs> to, to listen <laughs> to listen to you talk, and I, th I said, you know, this is an intelligent man. This is not somebody who I don't disrespect. I think this man, uh, you know, he, he may be independent thinking, which is good. Uh, he didn't know who he wanted to vote for up until the last minute, but he he's a smart guy. I, I don't see why it was that difficult a choice. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to ask you one more time. Uh, <laughs> why it was such a difficult choice, because uh, it seemed like this one man is, is preposterously unfit for office, and the other lady, uh, maybe not the best candidate, but, but certainly would have been a, put us in a better place. Well, I promised myself I would wait until after the, uh, the debates to lock in my choice, because there's, where there was news coming out every day, more about one than the other, but there was news coming out every day. And by the time I cast my vote, I was very confident in it. I, I was no longer even a shade of undecided. And that's about as much as I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken Bone. Ken Bone, the voice of independent America. I appreciate you coming out here.